Hello everybody and welcome to another hobby cheating video and today we're going to talk about reflected light, specifically motivated reflected light. So here uh, I'm working on uh, Larissa, oh what's her name, it's this girl, the anniversary model, Larissa Shadowstalker. This is such a cool model, like this is one of the coolest Stormcasts, if not the coolest Stormcast they've ever made. Um, and she's also, by the way, just as a slight aside as we're going here, this is the best sub-assembly model I've ever seen because, I'll bring the back of her in, you can assemble this whole part and the shoulder pads, the way they attach, it's not split down the middle like some of the early Stormcasts or anything like that. It just slots right in and hides the seams. Really nice. Anyway, we're gonna use the front part here for this example. So she has this very shiny, reflective, uh, celestial vindicators type scheme is what I'm going for here. And oftentimes I see people when they're trying to do sort of high non-metallic metal type schemes, highly reflective surfaces, they'll have the, uh, they'll have the light and shadow placed correctly or something, but then they ignore secondary lights. So, ref and, and that's reflected light. On any surface, you don't just, like light doesn't hit a thing and then stop, right? It bounces. And so what's happening is as light, as light comes, would come past her and impact the ground, it would bounce back up and hit the bottom sides. So what you actually have when you're dealing with non-metallic metal is usually two sets of highlights. So you have a primary highlight, which is your, your, your primary light here, right? And then you have your reflected light, which is generally gonna be, you're gonna go from middle to highlight. Like I'll just use her, her chest here as an example. So here's the actual highlight. That would be opposed by the darkest dark, right? It's the terminus of the light. And then as we got to the bottom here of this arc, right in here in this area, we would have this reflected light. So it would need to be coming back up and be sort of green again, right? And the key is the reflected light is never as strong as your highlight. You're not putting another area of white down here, but it should be something like your mid. So again, if we just use my standard one through five scale, one being the brightest area of your miniature and five being the darkest area of your miniature, the reflected light areas need to be like a three with maybe going to a two if there's a sharp surface to catch something. It's kind of the easiest way to define it. But in this case, we're gonna we're gonna do something fun. We're gonna motive, we're gonna do some motivated secondary lighting. So here on my palette, I have a bunch of oranges. Uh, specifically, uh, I have some uh, burnt orange and orange from Pro Acryl. I have some contrast Griffhound orange because it's one of my favorite oranges, and I have War Colors fluorescent because it is also one of my favorite oranges and it is hyper bright. So, uh, fluorescent, regular orange, burnt orange, contrast, okay? And what we're gonna do is down here on her sort of foot and leg, because that'll be the easiest part to show it off, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll go Darren Latham style and we'll just do the leg. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and show how those reflected lights should look. Uh, because the key is I'm gonna have her, there's a, a cold light coming from this direction, the way I'm painting it, and then there's gonna be warm motivated up from here. As she's assumingly fighting against this sort of, against this fiery waste of chaos or whatever, right? So what's gonna happen there in return is we're gonna see sort of the, the normal motivated light happen here on her foot and stuff like that. And I haven't finished all of the, the shading and smoothing of the blending of the primaries, and that's intentional. Like, this is still quite rough, and that's all right, because I wanna get my initial highlights, or, or my initial reflected lights in there and start working them into the mix so I have the full lighting picture. So I got this to a place pretty fast, and then said, okay, now let's get those secondary lights in so I can kind of balance them, see how much light is being cast in various places and so on. Now, when I do the back, when I do the, the back of her here, obviously her cloak, which is gonna be white, is gonna pick up a lot of that. You know, some of those undershades will also have to be reflected there. Okay, so we're gonna start with just our burnt orange here. And we're actually gonna also use just a little bit of our Green Stuff World Master Medium, which I, 
quite like as just generic medium. I've, I've come to really enjoy it. So we're just going to get a little bit of that on the palette. Okay. We're going to get a little of that. We're going to grab some of that burnt orange because it's rather soft. You can see it's not very, uh, not very intense. And what we're going to do is we're going to find our shadows here. And we're going to remember that same trick. So it goes from the highlight down here at the base of the foot up to the, you know, up through the shadow. And then we want to pull that orange into that area. So again, when I'm doing this, you'll notice my brush is always moving in the direction I want that light to go. Okay. Here on our foot, the reflection is going to be pushed toward the top. So that the dark is there so we just push a little orange there there's a little star thing here i don't know if you can really see it but she has like a little star on her leg let me see if i can focus that a little sharper there we go there you can probably see it sorry about that uh so i would normally run a line down this leg where it would be catching but unfortunately that's gonna kind of be halted so we're just gonna put a little bit in there now the knee is an interesting shape because technically here the reflected light on a round surface happens sort of on the bottom is where it gets caught. And that's the trick. Every shape has its own sort of way it reflects light. By the way, if you just sort of Google around for images of how light reflects on different shapes, Cujo made a great video about this. Cujo Miniature Painting made a fantastic video where he walks you through all the shapes and shows all that off. Uh, I'll, I'll link that in the description um, because you should absolutely watch it and frankly he made I would say the seminal video on it so no reason for me to try to recreate the wheel there but you can also just google around for images of it and you can find that what that looks like and then we can't forget about this little piece here because this is pointing directly at the light source so it's also going to have a little bit of that orange now in the initial pass, our orange here is going to be pretty weak. And that's just fine. It looks strange because suddenly we just have this bright orange, which just makes it look brown and kind of dirty. That's no problem. Because we're going to have to go back and smooth all that together, but we'll do that later. The key right now is we want to get in there and we want to understand and just place some highlights, okay? So, again, then now I've gone to the, uh, sorry, I've gone to the brighter orange, the just regular orange, as it were, from Pro April. And now we're going to come in to the tops of those areas where it would really be catching, or wherever the light would be the strongest. And we're just going to drop a little bit of that bright orange right in there. Okay, so that way we can see that fiery reflection there. Now, part of what sells an illusion like this is when you can't see things that don't have the reflection, right? Your eyes are very well trained to spot inconsistencies. So when it's not reflecting up there, it looks different. So we just put a little orange in there. That little thing would catch. Okay. So now, we're gonna get our highest highlights. Grab a little bit of that medium, we go to our fluorescent orange. This is specifically, like this stuff is radioactive and it's just for the actual edges, the light catches, the points where it's 100% on. Now, the key with this that we're going to do is just like we normally have our edges remember all these metallic edges are going to be highly reflective so that's where we grab our bright orange as opposed to going to something like white or whatever and i'd already edged them edge highlighted them because i wanted them to be caught here and to make my life easier so i just kind of edged the edge highlighted them with a, a whitish color and so now we're going to come in and we're going to make sure we catch 
all those edges. So for example, here on the bottom of her foot, this part, this part of the foot right here is facing up. There we go, sorry, touch it with my brush. This part of the foot is facing up, but the bottom side, the underside of it is not. So that underside should have a little orange fire catch on it, right? Same, by the way, with like right here on the back side where it's in that angle that's facing toward it. Should be orange there. Same, by the way, with all of these uh, ridges on the bottom of her foot. All these little edges of these armor plates would naturally catch this highly reflective orange. Okay. We'll mix a little bit of that regular orange in here to weaken it out into the fluorescent as we get farther away. Because we do want to reserve that brightest orange, that, that fluorescent. We only want that true, real hot orange where it's the closest to the fire. Right there at the point of no return. Okay. All right. So you can see now how we've got that secondary reflection placed in there. But it's really, really strong. Like it's so super stinking strong. Like it just looks like she's got fire on her. Which, I mean, it's kind of cool, admittedly. But not really what we want. Okay. So, the what we've got to do then is go back into our colors that, of the rest of the armor, whatever it happened to be, and we need to kind of bring that in line, right? Now, one thing we can do here, that's why I had the contrast paint, because I have some of my green, which I'll grab and bring over here to this side of the palette. So this is just some despair green here that I was using. And I'm gonna bring in a little bit of that contrast in with it. And that's really naturally thin. And what it's gonna get when we put them together is this green, uh, this very green orange shadow color, which is exactly what we want on the edge. Because remember, what sits right on the other side of that reflected lighting is your terminus, your dark point of light. So we go through the edges of where we put that burnt orange, right? And we just kind of smooth each one of those out. We can grab our brighter color, start mixing that into it a little bit as we start to push closer and closer back to the normal armor tone, right? And we can just kind of smooth that down with a nice little 50-50 mix. Keep pushing it around until we get a nice smooth transition between the two. Okay. If your orange is too bright, like if that feels too bright, you can always take some of that same shadow color that you made, we can work it down into a nice thin glaze and we can just bring that right over everything and knock it right back into, into the colors next to it. Just bring it right back into line. Okay, and make that orange a little softer. And that's the key with this. It's a very subtle effect, this sort of reflected lighting, right? Because it's not the type of thing that you can just have, uh, that you can, you're gonna be able to apply in like one simple 
coat and call it a day because every angle has to tell this story. So like they have the bottom side of this knee right here. It would need to be like, it would be catching the light as well, right? So every angle, every side has to tell the same story. The reflection has to be consistent or the eye will pick out those flaws and it will ruin the illusion. So like right here, I've got to real carefully come in and get just the bottom side of that, right? So that way it's reflecting up there too. All right, so what I'm gonna do now is keep playing around with this, push these kind of basic colors around on the rest of the model to see where I like the fire exactly where I want it to get all my, and that's that's just it, the six. There's no exact easy answer to this. I think when a lot of people ask for stuff like this, they expect that we'll just, step one, I'll do this thing. Step two, I will apply this paint. Step three, I apply this paint, now I am done. No, that's not how this works. Like, doing something like this with this motivated reflected lighting is a matter of consistently going back and forth and checking the work and seeing how it looks and does it catch and does it not and so on and so forth, right? So that's what we're gonna do. So I'm gonna play around with that for a little while and I will be back. All right, we're back and I zoomed way in so I could show you really everything in detail of how it's looking. So we've done some more work to smooth it out and I've added the orange all over. And I wanna show you what the, ref the, the reflective light looks like both in the motivated lighting color and in a non-motivated lighting color. So I did the back, obviously, because the flame is coming from this direction. So here you can see how we have the deep shadows. There you go, right? And then the orange is there. So it's a very subtle effect because we don't want her to be, you know, completely inflamed. Like the idea is that her armor is catching some of that light, right? And you'll notice how in all the cases, it'll go from a bright, through the spectrum into the sort of terminal point and then up into the reflected light, right? And same here where like the light's coming down, it's gonna hit the top of her knee. We go through a dark shadow and then into the actual light reflection. And then back here to this thing that's facing up and it's gonna catch that, but then the bottom edge of it reflects orange. So it's a lot of back and forth where you've gotta make sure all your edges, like you can see this edge right here, right here, how it has a little bit of the orange coming up from the underside. And I'll have to carry this through to everything else. So like when I do the this gladius here or whatever, right, the underside of this and this edge and down here will also need to catch it. The key with the brightest orange is you want very little, so like in this case I'm doing fire, but it could be any secondary light source. Uh, because I'm, I'm using this, I think it's just a nice contrast with this sort of turquoisey green color of the Vindicators. But whatever the regardless of the color of your light you want the very brightest of the reflected light to still be weaker than say whatever your your highlight is so whether you're doing a, a normal secondary reflected light of the ambient light coming down hitting the ground and bouncing back up or whether you're doing a motivated light source like this the brightest your secondary light should get should be far less bright than the highlight your actual motivated light source is doing, assuming you're working with, you know, this kind of secondary light. Now, there's another version of this where there is no primary light source, where she's lit only by this motivated lighting. That is a whole nother video and a whole separate, that's a whole separate ball of wax. But let's flip her around here. And you can see on the backside where this is obviously not exposed to any of the flame, right? So, the normal highlight is up here on her leg. We pass around through a shadow because this is a, a standard, the leg is basically a standard uh, cylinder. And then we get to the secondary reflection point, right? Uh, where that is, is motivated from. Here, even on the flat, we tried a little bit of having two different reflection points. You can see it here on this leg where here's the primary light coming down and hitting. And then under here, it's I don't know if you're actually gonna be able to see it on camera or not. Let me see if I can turn her. You can see there's that very weak secondary light right in there, right? So it doesn't always need to be strong, it just needs to be present. And 
you can see how a little bit of that orange passes through onto the back again in the deepest shadow here in this part of the leg because she's standing like this against the fire and when you look at that there's just that little bit that's poking out there that would catch some of that orange right so you want to make sure that any of those light catches edges the brightest spot that's where you hide that brightest color like here on the edge of her her foot where it's the stormcast feet have this very sharp angle down the middle right so you have that kind of a thing now looking at that at that angle it looks kind of silly um, like it looks a little bit too intense that transition from that orange to that dark so i might have to go and adjust that i might have to bring up some of this lighting here like all of this is constantly looking at your work like that rotating it and making sure that you have all the elements working in sort of this balanced harmony um, they don't it is not showing up real well on camera but like each one of the abs has a little dot of orange here in this lower corner away from the the uh, environmental lighting down into the motivated light for whatever reason it, that orange just will not show i can't figure out why but it's there i promise uh and then you have to carry that through to everything else so that's sort of your secondary reflections the real key to remember is the shape of the thing so like the the cylinder is a nice easy example practicing on legs is actually a pretty good way to learn like space marine legs and stuff like that stormcast legs because they tend to be just pretty straightforward cylinders in a lot of cases which means you're going to have a primary light that's going to go down through a mid-tone basically your one into your two right three four and then like on a top shadow like this i probably only go to four then we come back up and through into the highlight for the reflected light and then down all the way back to five and you can see underneath there is where the darkest light is or the darkest shadow sorry uh but the practicing on those kind of columns as you get those rotations is the way to sort of the best way to kind of practice it learn it get it internalized and it's a fun trick because it feels realistic when you can directionally look at the light and say oh okay i see where all of it's happening you know for example and you've got to really look around the model because you can see like right here see there's a little bit of orange under the bottom there you got to find all those little places where light would bounce your brain is going to be really really good at uh, at finding things that are incongruent and and making it look fake and it's tough because when you're the one painting it you're so close to it it's often hard to tell so my best recommendation if you want to try something like this with reflected lighting whether it be this style where you're all in the same tone or whether it be this style where you have a motivated source of a reflected light uh, is to just it's okay settle in place your lights like that's why i started by very roughly placing in those lights right because i didn't want to i wanted to make sure everything kind of worked as far as where was it going and then from that point it's just refine 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 and that's what i'm gonna have to now spend many hours doing is just you know touching each little area making sure every blend is smooth making sure all the edges that i want to catch that should be catching have appropriate lighting on them all right we're back sorry for the quick jump there i actually shot some of this and then decided to edit in a third portion here so uh, i wanted to show the model and my continued work with the lighting uh, so as you can see i've added in the rest of the colors and uh you know we've worked on all the other elements here and continued to bring that fire up into the other parts and I just want to kind of talk about the continual adjustment when you're doing something like this. So one of the things you'll notice is that the leg has a lot more orange on it and we've gathered a lot more of it towards this edge because as I thought about this, it's much nearer to the source of lighting. So I wanted to touch on a couple important elements to keep in mind here as you're readjusting this. One of the things people often try to do when they just start painting is they see a cool OSL effect and they're like, I want to do that too how do i do it how do i what paints do i use and it's like no 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 the <laughs> like i encourage you to try stuff like this it's awesome please do that's how you learn i'm just saying that there's a lot to think about this is you know one of the more complicated effects you can try to replicate and so i want to point out a couple different interesting elements here 
one, you need to think about the proximity of the element to the motivated light source. So in this case, the fire is coming from over here on this side where the tip of my brush is. So things here in this area should be more orange than things say over here or up here, all right? Because as the, the light moves, it's getting weaker as it travels up, all right? Similarly, you need to think about the surface texture of what your uh, what your surface is. So for example, this very shiny metal, which I've said through the, the highlights up here is highly reflective, needs to very much reflect a bunch of this fire. Whereas this soft leather of the, uh, of the, the sheath on her sidearm, right? Not as much because it's, it's a very soft color and it's a very dark color which is the next thing you need to think about, right? If something is white, it will show a lot more of the reflected color. If something is dark, it naturally absorbs more light in the same way that, you know, in general, something like the black of this paintbrush is going to, it's real glossy, but like there's a lot, you're not getting a lot of the color of the world around it, but if I held up a shiny, you know, sort of white object, it would show a lot of the colors in the world. So you wanna think about what this is. The non-metallic gold, if we look under here, you can see is reflecting a lot of it. And you notice that down here at the bottom part, it's reflecting brighter than up here at the top part where the angles are facing the fire. Similarly here, where we have this tabard that's kind of uh, furling out, right? Uh, here we turned this into the orange and we had the light gather around the edges with these these edges being the uh, the most highly lit parts, right? Um, so, and that's just what I've tried to do is to carry this all the way up so you can see how like these two of this little, these things have a name and people have told me the name and I just can't lock it in my head. But these little leather strappy things, uh, these two because they're in the path of the light and not blocked by the rest of the tabard, they're catching a little bit of the orange, this one's not, right? Same here all the way up and like looking at this, I realize I need to increase the orange on the bottom of this tabard handle a little bit. I don't quite have enough there because it's barely, it, in reality, there's a little bit of orange, but it's not showing very well to you on camera. But it needs to be soft because again, dark color, you know, moving away from the flame, that kind of thing. Uh, so that's the kind of considerations I'm continually, as I'm painting these other elements, I go back and I readjust the reflection on the armor. I glaze in a few more uh, layers of the orange or the dark orange brown, and I see how I like the look of that. All right. So one of the key elements is just A, what material is it reflecting off of? B, what color is the reflective surface and how well is it going to show the light? So a dark matte object should have the lowest amount of reflection. A bright white a uh, highly reflective object or something in that light color should show the most of the of the color, right? And then uh, see how close is the object in question, the, the portion of the miniature in question to the actual uh, to the actual source of motivated lighting. Those are the things you want to keep in mind. Now, of course, I've only got her done with the fire. I also did the back part here. We'll go ahead and line her up on camera, see if I can get her in line there. Do, 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 do. There you go. So now what I've got to do is basically take a picture uh, with the two of them kind of layered together like that. And then I need to figure out where exactly the orange is going to fall on here. So probably what it's actually going to mean is me pulling them off their little sticky bases, putting her together, getting a good picture of what that looks like so I can then sketch out the lighting and put it on here. This is where we come to a tricky phase because I've got to match this, which currently has no orange on it, right? to this, which has a bunch of the motivated lighting. And again, this is a white sort of satiny cloak, so it's gonna reflect a whole lot of the light coming back. So still quite a bit to do all in all, but that's okay. Uh, it's a fun project. I hope this was very helpful for you in thinking about uh, reflected lights and uh, motivated lighting. I hope this gave you a lot of interesting elements to think about. I know this was a little long and kind of rambly, but there's just a lot to unpack here. This is one of those techniques that's a lot less about the application of the paint and a lot more about the science and the theory behind the paint. So 
Uh, at any rate, I do hope you enjoyed this one. Give it a like if you did. Subscribe for additional hobby cheating in the future. Uh, we have new videos here every Saturday. If you have a suggestion for a future topic, go ahead and drop that down in the comments. If you had any questions on this, drop those down too. I always try to answer every question. But as always, I very much appreciate you watching this one, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.